Iranians come under influence of European scholars. And we have somebody here who's an Indo-European here, so I'm not going to like, point at her. Both some <laughs> Vedic and Avestan material. Uh, where in the 19th century, now this is a sober scholar right here, okay? Uh, ideas of language and race kind uh, got kind of fuzzy. What happened is, uh, the Romantic age was in motion where these Europeanists started studying these ancient languages. So let's see what's the Germanic and the <coughs> Italic languages and English, the good sort of you know, Anglo-Saxon language. Where does it go? How far does it go? Oh, there are these Indians and these Iranians who have these texts that are really old and related, the Indo-European languages. Oh, and, of course, uh, 19th century Europe and late 18th century, this racist idea of language and race uh, got really turned upside down. And in fact, there was a jump from the idea of uh, linguistic to biological ideas associated with Indo-Europeans and the Iranians and so on. It kind of became very crazy. And you can see, the, of course, the outcome of it is what the Nazis did in the 20th century. Right. Um, here's a stamp, see, I just call it stamp, 1950 uh, Bajar period. So the Bajars were actually interested about the Persepolis tap tap sheet. This is not something that the patterns were. Already in late uh, Bajar Iran, that was the case. That was the imperial propaganda. These two gentlemen, who I like very much for very other reasons, Fatali, uh, Mirza Fatali, Akhunza, on the left hand side, and, oh, sorry, on the left hand side, Mirza Akhun Kermani, on the right side is uh, are two of the early Iranian intellectuals, okay? And I say Iranian as a being dominated by the culture of Iran. Ahun Zadeh, who's known in the Republic of Azerbaijan as Ahun Dov, is a great playwright and author for the uh, sort of the Republic of Azerbaijan, I want you to know. But he is one of the main pro proponents of this super superiority of the Iranian race. Race, so now we're talking about race. We move from languages into race. So was uh, Kermani. Both of these people started to write in Persian, having been influenced by these European scholars in the 19th century. So this is a famous text that was used in the Qajar period. If you were someone who was a literati, who knew how to read or write, had gone to Doro Funun and so on, you would have read Mirza Ben Kermani, Salar Name which, you know, is in, it's quite poetic, and just look at what it says, at least some of the beginning, sort of early pages. Blessings to the Aryan tribe of good lineage, which Iran has remained due to them. All them Germanic and Saxon, they all have a race from them. This curious, bizarre, racist ideas of race connections enters into the Iranian psyche in the late Hajar period with Kermani and Ahun Zadeh and few others, who by the way lived mainly in the Caucasus, which is interesting. They had studied in Teflis, Tbilisi, and they were around that place that most of these ideas probably were coming from France and Russia, uh, that brought about this curious idea about what is an Aryan. So now the Aryan theory race that had begun in Europe in the late 18th and 19th century and in the 20th century, we saw what it did, became part of the Iranian intellectual discourse of what an Iranian is. And uh, the idea of someone is a Semite, Arab, Mongol. And these divisions began to become noticed and actually discussed within at least the intelligentsia. Now, 1925, the Pahlavi dynasty comes. The Pahlavis attempted to unify the group. They created major institutions, but they also tried to bring uniformity to this very diverse place. And so it has good and bad effects. The good effect is it brought a unity to, in terms of structure as a government, which it really didn't have as much before, uh, established it, uh, made it safe to some extent. Reza Shah, remembered since 1936, was pronouncing we are Iranian because his German advisors had said, uh, you know, 
uh, your highness, you are Aryans, you should call yourself Iran, uh, turned out to be Iran. But this idea of not only glorification of the past, which was part of, part of the Qajar period as well, but the idea that we should have one language. Iran has been a Persian-speaking nation from time immemorial, right from the Achaemenid period, Cyrus the Great, uh, until now, we have spoken Persian. And so all those other people who spoke any language besides Persian, be it Iranian languages we want to classify it, right, or non-Iranian, were suppressed. The outcome of you know this kind of a policy is what we have in uh, the province of Azerbaijan today, okay? To a lesser extent in Khuzestan. And what we have in Sistan Balistan to a far less extent. Okay? <coughs> so some, when you make a policy, sometimes it has good effect and it has partly not so good effect. This was what we call the Aryanism cultural policy of the Pakistan. 1979. Islamic Republic of Iran established. And right off the bat, if you look at the stamp, this is a later stamp, and this is not exactly what I was trying, but it shows it. The Islamic Republic tried to exactly disassociate itself with the not only ancient Iran, right, which was really pushed uh, in the Pahlavi era, but also with the idea, no, this is a country that has many different people. It has Arabs, it has, you know, lures, it has Kurds, <coughs> it has all sorts of And so the diversity was shown. This is a children's stamp around the world. So you're going to say, look, there are all sorts of people. Uh, we do have early stamps. If you look at uh, the revolutionary stamp, the first set that I have shows the Iran with all these people with different costumes. So diversity now becomes two four. So if you were born after that time, most of you probably were. Oh, you were part of this diverse world. But also, Islam as an identity was now pushed, right? So now Islam is very important, particularly Shi Islam, right, as part of your identity, and uh, you probably have not seen these. I used to pull that and collect these things, thanks to many, from the Padre So what's on the back of the band note? Whose uh, cylinder is coming to Los Angeles, right? Late September, October. And what does the Islamic Republic put on the back of it? In Moss, somebody says. So they're emphasizing one aspect of uh, this cultural life, one dynasty emphasizes another. Any of these have good and also negative effects, okay? That's why she goes like this when uh, we're looking at a mosque. So now when uh, we've come into this later stage of Islamic Republic, what we have are those type of banknotes, right? right? That uh, are quite interesting, which in the back of it has uh, a saying from the Prophet Muhammad, knowledge exists in the Palates, some of the Persians would have reached it. So the Hadith, but it's directed as, and again, in Arabic, the Iranians were called, uh, you know, or kings of uh, Persia were called Muluka Fars, the kings of Iran. So they've just taken the Arabic and translated it into Persian and said, uh, in English, the Persians. So in, I've heard in the Azerbaijan province, this uh, paper money is not very well liked. Okay? They could have simply just said with Iran, and things would have been. So that's the Islamic Republic. So each dynasty in the past 200 years has come and said, look, this is what Iranian is. We'll emphasize Cyrus is to know. The mosque, Islam is important. You know, uh, and that has created some confusion about Iran is. When did Iran come about? Uh, how did this idea form a picture? So now I really will talk about what I'm, I know a little bit more. I think. So how old is this idea of Iran, or what it was known in uh, the ancient times as Iran Shah? How, why, when? We think uh, the name Iran and Iran Shah, that means the realm of the Iranians, is first, what we know for certain, was first mentioned in the third century of Common Era. So you have to go back 1,700 years ago to this gentleman who is under the Lahaf with that lady. <laughs> and she's the daughter of the last Parthian king. And that is Ardeshir, the first or Ardeshir Balakam, the founder of the Sasanian dynasty, who topples the previous dynasty of the Parthians, who professes a religion called Zoroastrianism for the Zoroastrian Association, 
Lucas, and the language that is used for administration actually is Middle Persian, just like the Pata is the language Persian now, is dominant. Why do I say you should ask, where do you get your information? Well, here's a coinage of Ardashir, one of the early imperial coinage, where the slogan on the obverse reads, Mazda worshipping majesty, Ardashir, king of kings of Iran, who is from the lineage of the gods. Right off the bat, this coin, this is something that they minted and they wanted everybody to know. First of all, they said we're Mazda worship. So we know there's Zoroastrians, right? The super deity of Zoroastrianism. And this guy is the king of the kings of the Iranians. These are the two new ideas that are really brought forth 1,700 years ago by this gentleman, Mr. Akash. Iran. So sometimes I write Iran with an E. In Middle Persian, you write it with an E with a long diacritic. Now this idea of Iran, uh, is certainly older than the Sasanians. Okay? Sir, you're late. LA <laughs> traffic. I'm joking, I know. Uh, the idea of Iran is older. In what way? You have to go all the way back to the sacred hymns of the Zoroastrians, which was collected at some time and put together as a text called the Avesta. And within the Avesta, there are various sections that discuss the idea of Iran and with its other endings, such as Iran Vis. If you look at sort of uh, this location that is mentioned, for example, in the Yasht 5, it's called sometimes Aban Yasht in Persian, the Yasht to Lady Anahita, an important deity in Zoroastrianism, where uh, heroes and kings of the remote past sacrifice to her in order to gain power to defeat their enemies. And she's told to be residing by the good river Daiti. Uh, another part of the Avesta called the Vendida, which some Zoroastrians don't like very much, but it is very important. The first chapter is actually a geographical context of this idea of what Iran means. It is that important. It says the best places and habitations um, is uh, where Iran is, where 10 months of winter there and two of summer. And even those are too cold for water for Earth, for planets. So it seems to have been a very nice place, a little bit too cold, and hence the movement of these Iranian tribes. And we think this is somewhere in Central Asia that uh, this original idea of an Iran existed in the Avesta corpus. And indeed, the Avesta is the most important, uh, I think, uh, text for identity in terms of vis-a-vis -vis Iran, uh, along with the Shahnah. These are the two important texts that you'll get information. In the Avesta, there are various uh, terminology that suggest an idea of an Iran. Aryana Vajit, the plain of the Iranians. Uh, which in Pahlavi, Middle Persian, it's Iran Vis, the plain of the Iranians. Aryo Shayana, dwelling place of the Aryans. Arya Dainbu, uh, the Aryan land. So we get this idea that these Aryas or these Iranians uh, lived at some place. And what happened is, uh, this is, uh, we think this is uh, probably Lady Anahita in the Sasanian period being shown, giving a diadem of rulership to King Narsa, uh, late 3rd, early 4th century. Later. We think, at least from the Achaemenid period, distant past, there was a temple to her within the province of Fars. And if she's associated with this place called Iran, where the Achaemenids and the Sasanians were interested, hence the idea of Iran rising from the province of Fars makes sense. This priest, who I like very much, in the third century, is named Kardir. Fabulous, amazing priest. <coughs> this priest in the third century goes on to tell us exactly what where he was. You know, if you talk to political scientists, with all due respect to polis, polis, political scientists and some historians, say, yes, but Iran is a notion that it's a modern nation state. Yeah, but in antiquity, Iranians exactly knew they had a conception of where and these are the provinces that Mr. Kardir says is part of Iran, from Asuristan all the way to Peshawar. So at least for these people in the third century, parts of Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, parts of Pakistan, and even Turkmenistan was this Iranian world. Okay, that is the third century. The priest in that inscription is telling us. Okay, we're not guessing; we're being. 
pulled. 